Let's bring in a guy who's very invested in what BYU has done, is doing, and will do. Brian Keel, who was a leader on that BYU defense. Brian, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Hey, fellas. Thanks for having me. Brian, what does it take to be a leader on a BYU defense coached by Bronco Mendenhall? That's a good question. You know, honestly, there's, there's different types of leaders. And um, I think the first thing, though, is, is credibility. Um, you don't have to be a superstar, but you have to be a good player. Um, you know, that's, that's necessary for you to have credibility. And then you have to be doing everything right. You know, you can't be slacking in the weight room. You can't be slacking in conditioning. You can't be slacking academically or, you know, different aspects of, of your life to have the credibility that it takes. And so, yeah, I think that's kind of one of the things that the, the defense really missed last year was, was leadership. Can you try to be a leader or does it naturally happen? I think it's both. I think there's guys who are natural and, and then there's guys who, who wouldn't normally be inclined to speak up or say things. And, and sometimes, you know, it's just of necessity they have to. Um, but the thing that I, I mentioned at first about there being different kind of leaders, that's what um, just a prime example is, is like Cameron Denson, who I played with, um, versus myself. Um, both leaders, but very different. Um, I wasn't nearly as vocal as Cameron was. And, um, you know, Cameron was uh, kind of a bulldog, obviously nicknamed the general, and because he had those attributes, and he was just kind of, you know, just grisly and, and loud and, and vocal. And me, on the other hand, I, I wasn't quite as vocal. I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd open my mouth when it needed to, but I, I wasn't constantly open my mouth. I was more the guy who, who did what he was supposed to do and, and, you know, led from the, the front of the pack by example. But you need both. You need, you need both those kind of guys out there, and we definitely were missing that. You could see it. I could see it at least. You could, they were missing that on the defense last year. Former BYU and NFL linebacker Brian Kill with us on BYU Sports Nation. Looking at the roster now, and I don't know how tied in you are to the current BYU defense with the, the young guys at the linebacker position in the secondary, who do you see on the current roster that could be one of those leaders in 2015? See, that's, I, I honestly couldn't – it's not a good answer you're going to like, but I, I really couldn't even answer that because I, I haven't been around those guys enough in the locker room, in the weight room, and in practice settings to know who's a leader. I mean, I could tell you, you know, a little bit about their football ability, but that's different um, as far as being a leader. And so I, I honestly – I'm not sure who the leaders are out there. I can say that there wasn't somebody – at least with credibility, who, who stepped up last year. And I hope somebody fills that void. We all hope someone fills that void this year because they need it. Um, I think the natural candidate is, is, is Bronson Kafusi, And whether or not that's his, his, his normal tendency, then, then he's going to have to be the guy, like we just mentioned, who's just going to have to kind of go outside of his comfort zone. Um, you know, him being a senior and, and being, being who's supposed to be the star then uh, it's just kind of falling on him. He's got he's to speak up and be that guy this year. Where do you see the leadership the most if it's not on the field? What do you mean by that? For example, uh, where does a leader be a leader the most, I guess? The locker oh, okay, room, the okay. weight room, I see, the I see what you're saying. hanging yeah, out? You know, honestly, yeah, and honestly, that's the thing. On the field, it's not even that much. You know, maybe in a moment or here or there um, – you know, somebody will say something and, and rally together on the sideline or something like that. But honestly, it is, it's really more in the locker room and the, the weight room, especially in, in the weight room and, in, and, and, and out on the field during, during the, the spring and summer, you know, when it's 100 degrees and you're out there running gassers. That's, that's where leaders step up. That's where, you know, leaders look down the line and, and see guys bent over or, or you know, sucking gas and, and, and a leader. And it doesn't, it doesn't take much. You don't need to give them – some rah rah speech, but it's just like, hey, stand up, let's go. You know, just just something little, and it's just little things like that that are cumulative, that add up. You know, that that when you you do those little things in January, and February, and March, and all the way through July, that when you're in the heat of battle in October, you've already put the work in, and you've already paid the price to be prepared to beat your opponent. And I think that's what we really missed last year. And not just, not just um, you know, from psychologically, but also just from a preparation standpoint, um, though, that defense, those guys that were out there playing, I've said this before, they, they did not execute the defense properly. And, and that's a matter of in the spring and summer, 
guys not getting together and working on the defense, not getting in the film room on their own time, not getting on the same page. And that, that all comes back to leadership. What will Bronco Mendenhall taking over the defense once again do to help in the areas of concern that you just addressed? I think it'll help. Uh, you know, Bronco's one of the, the best natural leaders that I have ever been around in my entire life. And um, yeah, I've, I've said this before, this comparison. Um, you know, people who have interacted with Bronco, he's not an extrovert. He's, he's not a social butterfly. He doesn't want to be the life of the party. He knows that, and he acknowledges that. That's not who he is. But he does want to lead. And I have never been around a person, you know, I've seen equals, but I've never seen anybody superior to him possessing the ability to lead men. And in this case, it's football, but I I mean, I think he could lead men in whatever he wanted to do. And, you know, some people have that innate ability and he has that ability. So now when you, when you, when you put him in control of that defense and, and with his high character and, and high accountability and all the things that he brings to the table, I just think you're, you're, you're automatically going to see improvement and you're going to see progress. Is there concern if Bronco Mendenhall is the biggest leader on that defense uh, and there's a wide gap compared to maybe some other players that might need to step up? Yeah, you don't, you don't want that. I mean, you, you want some players that are, that are vocal and that, that say, and like I said, it doesn't have to be a huge 10-minute speech. It, should, it actually really shouldn't be a 10-minute speech, but <laughs> it's just little things. It's just... It's just little things, you know, here or there. And it's just, it, it really, it's just a, a mindset and an attitude and just not allowing mediocrity. You know, if you see mediocrity, it's not allowing that. And it, it's saying something and getting on people. And, and you don't have to be a jerk about it, but it's just, and, and that's where you have to have, like I said, you have to have the credibility. Because if, if, if guys who don't have the credibility and they try to say something, then whoever they're saying it to is going to be like, whatever, man, I'm not listening to you. But if the person has the credibility, if they have the strength of character, then most of the time, not always, but most of the time, whoever they're saying something to, they'll listen to it. Brian Keel with us on BYU Sports Nation, former BYU linebacker standout, also played in the NFL. Brian, if you are giving this year's team a pep talk with Broncos, uh, I don't know, blessing, what are you going to say to this team in spring football right now? Well, I actually gave the team a pep talk a week ago. <laughs> um, on on Saturday, a week ago Saturday, I went down there. Brockman had me talk to the guys. Um, but I'll tell you what I told them. I I talked to them just a little bit about talent, about about will versus skill, just a little bit. Um, I, I mentioned how I got to BYU in, in 2002. We ended up going five and seven, and that that team that I played on was by far the most talented team. I ever played on, but I talked about leadership. We lacked leadership. It, you know, it was a big fall off from the year before when you had great leaders who left the team in 2001. BYU went 12 and two, and the next year, you know, we ended up going five and seven. Anyway, I talked about that and, and contrasted that to my last years where we didn't lose a single game in conference. We didn't lose a single game at home. We won our bowl games. We finished 11 and two both those years um, with with less talented teams. So I talked about that, and then. You know, I, I just talked about the, just the work and the preparation that it takes, and it starts in January. If you don't put the, the, the time in in January, there, you, don't have, you don't stand a chance in September. And, you know, I, I said, I said, you know what, I, I was pretty frank with them. And I, you know, I didn't talk for a long time, but I was frank with them. I said, hey, you know what, if you guys are cool being 8-4, and four, keep doing what you're doing. If you're okay with that, keep doing what you're doing. I said, me personally, I'm not okay with that. I told him, I said, I'm not okay being 11-2. and two. I'm still mad about the, the, the four games we lost my last two years. They still haunt me, thinking about maybe if I would have made this play or that play, because all four of those games we lost by a single play. You know, and it, anyway, I just talked about if you want to be better, if you want to be great, then you've got to put the time in in January. Now, you know, I don't, I don't know if they, if they heard me or not. I hope they did, and I hope they improved. I heard you, and I'm fired up. Let's go. <laughs> that Boston go, College man. overtime loss stunk, and I'm mad about it. No. I'm still mad. Double overtime. <laughs> Double overtime. That's right. We missed, we missed two field goals in the last minute uh, of regulation. Come on. I still remember, man. I still remember. It's March, and I'm fired up. Hey, tomorrow's pro day. Uh, what? Tell us a little bit about the nerves and the, the excitement of going into pro day to 
audition for a job for some of these BYU guys tomorrow? You know, it's 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 uh, kind of that exposure to the to the next level, um, and most of the guys didn't get invited to the combine. Um, I think Alani was the only one that got invited, and so so you know Alani had exposure already, and I'm sure even he he's excited because he wants to improve on his numbers. I did when I, I went to the combine. And I had a tweaked hamstring, and I, I did well. I still did well in every category, but I was kind of came away mad. I came away kind of a little a little mad because I knew I had more in me, and I ended up going to pro day, and I beat every single time and every vertical and every I beat everything I did because um, I was I was more healthy. But as, as far as um, those other guys, they haven't even had that exposure, so they're chomping at the bit. And you know, it's, most kids, not every kid, but most football players, they dream about making it to the NFL and. and the numbers, it's, it's not going to be a reality for the vast majority of them. But, you know, kids dream, and they should dream and, 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 and hope for the greatest, and, and this is their chance. So they're excited for tomorrow. Brian Kill with us on BYU Sports Nation. Brian, I know that uh, the NFL uh, was hard on your body, but uh, I'm hearing some things about you maybe wanting to give it a go again. What uh, What is your status in still chasing an NFL career? Yeah, so I – I am actually. I've been planning on going to pro day tomorrow and and, and participating. Um, I was told yesterday that there's a chance they won't let me. The scouts, that is. So we'll see. I might have to sweet talk them. Um, but there's been guys in the past who who were were older and came back and and both at BYU and at other schools. It's it's not common, but it happens fairly often where guys come back and do pro day again. So I I, I think I'll be able to, but but we'll see. I, I've been preparing for it. I've been working working really hard. Um, in the NFL, you just kind of get out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, I was going great until I tore my, my ACL. That kind of knocked me out. And since then, I've been out of sight and out of mind. So I'm hoping to go out there tomorrow, run a great 40, and just kind of turn some heads and, and make them rethink about this old 30-year-old linebacker. And you're 30 years old, and you're an old guy. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Crazy, huh? That's the NFL, man. It's funny. It's all, life's all about perspective, isn't it? Absolutely. Hey, uh, we'll end with this. You said Paul Asike was was your guy with the best chance to make an NFL roster. Do you still stand by that? Um, I think so. Um, and just, you know, people who didn't hear that conversation that we had, they're hearing it just now. Let me just kind of explain myself. I, 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 I said that Paul wasn't necessarily the best football player of those guys. Right. But I, in my opinion, he has the height, weight, speed combo that NFL teams look for. And as far as – because all of those guys, none of them is going to be a high draft pick if they are drafted, which means it comes down to making it on special teams. And, and I just – I think he probably – probably the key word has the best chance. Um, I think Alani is the best football player out of all those guys. But the, he just – his height, weight, speed, um, he's just kind of a, just a tweener. You know, if, if he was 20 pounds bigger, he would have such a better chance. He's got a great chance as it is. It's just going to be, you know, teams are going to have to be looking at him and thinking, okay, what can we do with this guy? But he's a great football player. Brian, great to talk to you again. Uh, hopefully we'll see you on the field at Pro Day. I mean, let Brian play, people. Come on. Let me in, man. Let me, let me into the party. Come on. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you. All right, Brian, thanks for the time.